Hello everyone, I'm Minister Hadi and welcome back to our Get In Field YouTube channel and part three, the concluding part of our series, Finding Favor, Operating the Law of Expectation. I just hope that um, you're ready to, as I am ready and excited to uh, con go ahead and jump into this uh, teaching and get to the conclusion and get to the real nitty gritty about favor and how to make it a reality in our world. Uh, before we start, let's just go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for allowing us to gather and complete the series of Finding Favor, the Operating the Law of Expectation, Part 3. I just ask that everybody's heart is ready to receive this word and that this word will go forth and break strongholds, destroy yokes, and remove uh, erroneous information that we may have and replace it with sound doctrine so that we can be approved of you and that we'll be able to bring about this favor into our lives. Father, we just thank you for an avenue to be able to spread this uh, rightly divided truth that you have given us and an avenue where we can receive this rightly divided truth. We, we, we do not take it for granted, but there are so many places around the world that your word is forbidden and people cannot have easy access to it. So we don't take this for granted or lightly. Father, we thank you for seeing about us and making sure that we do have the tools necessary to be able to live life victorious, to be able to be effective witnesses unto this dead and dying world that there is really a true God worthy to, uh, worthy to be worshiped and glorified. And all this, Father, we ask through us, our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 So, uh, Let's just go ahead and do a little brief recap. Uh, in part two, we did uh, go over uh, certain scriptures. We were kind of narrowing it down. We kind of, like in part one, talked about the law of expectation. And in part two, we kind of started to break down what the law of expectation is, narrow it down to specifics. We narrowed it down to having mercy and truth in operation in our world. Mercy. In that you are able to show mercy and truth that you stand upon the truth of god's word we also understood that obedience was also an important factor because obedience was the glue that made everything work that without obeying god's word and doing it with the right motives and the right heart all this stuff would not work the laws won't work either we established that the law of expectation is really to whomsoever but that favor belongs only to the believer so it's critical that we get that uh, distinction so we don't worry about why the world seems to be prospering and it's like they're operating God's rules well because the law of expectation applies to whosoever. However, favor applies only to the Christian. So we should be concerned about that as well and make sure that we're always doing what we're supposed to do so that we can have favor. So that not only do we have a, a great life, but our children also will be beneficiaries our spouses will be beneficiaries. Our friends will be beneficiaries of this favor that God will place in our lives. So we should not always just be thinking about ourselves, but we should also be thinking about those who are connected to us, more importantly. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're really supposed to be doing. We should be thinking about others more so than we even think about ourselves. So by us walking in favor, that favor gets extended and everybody who is around us, who's connected to us, gets to experience for themselves that favor of God. And who knows? That could be your witness into to bring somebody who is not even in the family of God to get them to join. Because a lot of times, witnessing, true witnessing is not by words, it's by deeds. They look at the action. What are you doing? Actively doing that makes them make a decision whether they're going to really listen to what you're going to say and then maybe change their mind and change their heart concerning the things that you've been talking to them about. Jesus Christ, his ministry was so effective, not because he, Jesus Christ never passed around tracks. Jesus Christ never had revivals and all that. Jesus Christ's ministry was so effective because he lived it. He lived the word of God. He made it alive. The, he made the word a living, breathing, tangible thing that they, people could literally see the manifestation 
that's what was so effective about his ministry and that's why when he could go into a town he could shut the whole town because the whole town wanted to come and experience this individual who seems to be living life at his highest peak that was zoe the zoe life that god has made available to us as well if we can just walk according to his statutes if we can just keep his commandments if we can just obey his laws his protocols and have them in place in our lives God said that life is available to us as well. And the closest person who kind of demonstrated that was Paul. Paul walked at that high level of living where you saw even when the snake bit him, he was not hurt. A snake that where typically you get bit, a minute you're gone. He, was still, he just shook it off and kept on going. And they marveled at him. That how did he survive that? That he must truly have a relationship with God. That's the type of life we're supposed to be having as Christians that will be a witness, not just even to the believers, but to the unbelievers, more importantly, because they're the ones who need to be saved. So now, uh, back to favor, we also recognize God is saying, look, hey, even if you have a faith of a mustard seed, a mustard seed is about the size of a pinhead. He's saying, if you just have that, that's that alone, and you can believe Without doubt, you can see it in your mind's eye and don't waver. You will have whatever it is you, you ask for. So now we also uh, talked about how sometimes we rob ourselves as Christians because we speak negatively over ourselves. We speak death over ourselves when God has asked us to always speak life over ourselves. When we speak life over ourselves, then we can now get... Uh, the benefits of that life that we have spoken over ourselves because you have to understand that out of the abundance the heart speak it so when you're speaking death over yourself really truly what you're saying is that that's what you believe and whatever you believe when you speak it you receive it because that's your birthright to be able to speak and receive so when you speak evil you receive evil when you speak life you receive life so let's be careful of our confessions what we say what comes out of our mouth because at the end of the day, we get impacted by it. And not only we as individuals get impacted by it, but the people around us get impacted by it. Because if something negative happens to me, it will affect my spouse, it will affect my children, it will affect my uncles, aunts, cousins, everybody, friends who know me, co-workers. Everybody gets affected, even if it's not directly, it might be indirectly. So let's be careful what we say and what we let come, of, come out of our mouths. Also, we talked about how there is a qualifier, as it were, to having uh, the law of expectation operate correctly and efficiently in your world. And that qualifier was forgiveness. That if we do not forgive, our prayers will not be answered. So whatever it is that we're asking for, we, we can just be rest assured we're not going to get it. Because God has asked us to forgive. And that's why he talked about the scripture where if you have a, a art or you have something against somebody, anybody, that you just leave your gift at the altar, go fix that situation, and then come back and give your offering. Because if you are giving your offering, then with that, uh, with that the grudge or with that ought against somebody, your offering will have been useless. It will not have been received by God. So that's very important. That's vital. We have to understand that. So whenever you're going to God, for stuff you have to make sure that your heart is pure your heart is in the right place that you have a clean heart a pure heart and clean hands because if not your prayers or your supplications are not going to uh, be received by God then we also saw that not only do we, when we do what we're supposed to do and follow the protocols not only do we find favor but we also get wisdom wisdom comes with it we also get high esteem as well, where we are now regarded highly by the people who are around us, by man. So these are also extra benefits of operating the law of expectation, of, or, or really of obeying God. We get all these things. The law of oper uh, expect uh, expectation now works for us. We now have great wisdom. We now have this fellowship with God. We have peace. We have security. We're no longer anxious about things. We are content with where we are. All these beautiful things come about because we are obedient to God. And the main thing that we're talking about today also is that we also find favor. So you see the word is always saying find favor. It doesn't say 
obtain favor. It says find favor, which means there's something you have to do to be able to uncover it. And the things you have to do to uncover it is what we're going over right now. The mercy, the truth, the obedience, the forgiveness. Then when you do all these things, now you uncover favor. You have, then you find it. So now, um, let's go back to uh, where we left off. Um, I believe we left off. At, we just uh, defined what favor was. And... Uh, Let's go to Psalms 103, verse 20, and I'm going to read it from the King James, and it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength and do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Now, this voice, this verse states that the angels are heeding to the voice of his word. Now, who gives voice to God's word? We do. We, the believers. So each time we speak God's word, we give voice to his word. When the angels hear his, his word given voice, guess what? They respond. They go do it. They, make, they carry it out. They make it come to pass. This is why your confessions, when we talk about what comes out your mouth, how it's so important. Instead of speaking death, speak life, God's word. When you speak God's word back to God, those angels have to move and go get it done. That is how you have, that's that birthright when we talk about when you speak, it gets, it comes to pass. That's part of the reason why, because you are speaking the word of God. And the angels have no choice but to carry it out. Remember the, in Daniel chapter 10 verse 12, uh, it is written that at the end of Daniel's uh, three weeks of fasting and prayer for an answer from God, the angel Gabriel appeared to Daniel and said to him, I have come because of your words. See, the angel Gabriel came because of his words. So, do you see how important it is about what comes out your mouth? So when you speak the word of God, the angels have no choice but to come and to do what it is that your word has said or has been what well, was spoken in your words. Now, while doing this research, I came across um, something that uh, seemed to go against the word of God. You know, a particular scripture that seemed to counter what we're saying. And the reason why I'm going to go over it is, I mean, I could have just ignored it, but I always know that naysayers out there, there are people who are always trying to disc uh, discredit or disprove that the word of God is true. So I just said, well, we just go ahead and nip everything up in one, you know, nip it in the bud and go ahead and take care of everything in one swoop. And that verse is Proverbs, well, yeah, Proverbs 31, 30 verse, uh, the first part of the verse. And I'm from the King James, it says, favor is deceitful. Now, that seems to go against everything that we've talked about because favor being deceitful, it seems like it's a bad thing. So... Now, we just have to make sure that we get it in context. Get everything in context because if you parse something, then you might get a wrong understanding, a wrong meaning for, for of what it really means or, or what's trying to be conveyed. So now, we all understand that John chapter 10, verse 35, second part of the verse, uh, I'm going to read a blended scripture from the King James, the ERV, you know, the English Revised Version, the GNT, which is the Good News Translation, the Message Bible, and the Amplified Classic, it says, Scripture cannot be broken. Scripture doesn't lie. It is always true. Scripture can not be set aside or canceled or broken or annulled because it is true forever. So now that puts us in direct opposition to what we just read about uh, favor being deceitful. Now, the word deceitful, one of the definitions which now makes sense when you think about it, it means to be misleading. Deceitful means to be misleading. So now when we have this definition in the back of our mind, because this definition is perfect. So now let's look at the context. And let me let me give an explanation with an example. Let's say you go to a job interview, and there may be like 10 other applicants, and uh, the job requires you to have a bachelor's degree and everybody there has bachelors, some people have masters and PhDs, and not just regular masters and PhDs, uh, bachelors, but they also have it from universities of renown like Yale and Harvard and MIT and stuff. 
and you are there and you only have a high school diploma. So in actual sense, you're really not qualified for the job. But you went anyway because you know it's something you can do and it's something that you want to do. You have a desire for it. Now, interviews get conducted. Everybody gets their chance and gets interviewed. And obviously, you would think that the person with the, mo with the best qualifications would get the job, right? However, the spirit of favor, remember we talked about how this uh, favor is uh, misleading? So in this sense, favor is misleading is that even though I can't see the spirit of favor right there at the place when I was having the interview, that doesn't mean it wasn't there, it wasn't working on my behalf. Now, I might have a high school diploma with no degree, but yet, because the spirit of favor is working up for me and has shown up because I've been carrying out all the rules and regulations concerning the law of expectancy, whereby I've not been able to activate the spirit of favor in my world, in my life. Now, what happens is this job that I do not deserve. Remember all those definitions that being able to get something that you don't deserve? Now, I don't deserve this position based on my qualifications, but because I'm the child of God, I deserve it. I qualify for it because I'm the son of the Most High God. So God can now open the doors and speak to the heart of the person who is doing the interviewing or the hiring to hire me over all the other people, even though I'm the least qualified. That's what favor is. So it is deceitful in that sense. It is deceitful in the sense that based on the scheme of things or how things are typically done, I shouldn't get the job, but at the end I did. And all because I have that relationship with God. So that's how it's deceitful or misleading. So the scripture itself did not contra it was not contradicting what God is saying. It just gave you a different perspective of how to look at favor. So at the end of the day, we are still on the same page. The, the, the word of God has not been broken. I'll give you another example. When I say it's deceitful, when we say it's deceitful, we're not saying that it's, it's not wicked, but just deceitful in the sense that it's unexpected. And so let's, I'll give you something personal. At the time I was trying to buy a car, and it was $3,500. And I was buying it on eBay. I hadn't even seen the car, nothing. I told God I want to buy a car. God said, go to eBay and look. I saw a car, I said, God, I really like this car. I said, do I bid on it? He said, yes. I started bidding on it. I said, but Lord, all I want to spend is $3,500. He said, okay. And I started bidding, and we started bidding, and it got to about 20, about, about 20, 30 minutes to the end of the auction. And then the price, it hit 3500 I was the winning bid at that time. Eight minutes to when the auction was about to end, somebody bid thirty five twenty five. So I was like, oh, well, I guess that wasn't my car. But I said, Lord, you told me I should bid on the car. That, that means you wanted me to have the car. So what happened? God said, go ahead and bid, put another bid in. So I bid, put a bid at 35.50, but I was like, Lord, uh, I said I wanted to pay 3,500. He said, go ahead and bid. So I went ahead and put the bid, 35.50. And some minutes later, auction ended, I won. So I went to go collect the car, or pick up the car. And when I got there, they was like, oh, you're the one who won it, okay. And she was just talking to me and she said, you know what? The place I went to pick, the car was in a, pretty much like in another city, but it wasn't so much of a drive. It was maybe like 45 minutes to an hour out. The lady said, you know what, since you did such a, you have such a long drive over here, I'm going to take off $50 and sell it to you for $3,500. So do you see how favor works? So the price that I asked God for ended up paying that exact same price that God had promised me I would be able to get it in. That's favor. She had no reason to take off $50 for, for it. None whatsoever. I didn't even ask her for it. She gave it to me. Willingly of her own volition, of her own will. She gave me that favor. That's how favor works. So it might be misleading that, oh, you're going to pay 3500 and I had to drive all the way down there to get it. But at the end of the day, favor showed up. And I got the car for exactly what I wanted. So that's how favor works. You know, when you operate the law of expectancy, you receive what you get. Favor will always be there waiting on you to uncover it. Now, 
Proverbs 3, as we can see, it keeps on repeating the protocol of finding favor. We read the first part of Proverbs 3, and I'm going to read the last part of it. Well, not all of it, but verses 11 through 18. And I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. Because I really want you to get this thing that we're talking about. That this favor, high work, the law of expectation. So that you don't leave. We as Christians, we're leaving too much on the table. And it's time out for that. It's time for us to be able to live at the full stature which God has called us to live. I do apologize. still have these hiccups. So let me go ahead and get something to drink real quick. And um, let's go ahead and read it. Proverbs, um, Proverbs 3, verse 11 through 18. On the Passion Translation. My child, when the Lord God speaks to you, never take his words lightly and never be upset when he corrects you. For the Father's discipline comes only from his passionate love and pleasure for you. Even when it seems like his correction is harsh, it is still better than any father on earth gives to his child. Those who find true wisdom obtain the tools for understanding, the proper way to live, for they will have a fountain of blessing pouring into their lives. To gain the riches of wisdom is far greater than gaining the wealth of the world. As wisdom increases, a great treasure is imparted, greater than many bars of refined gold. It is more valuable, is a more valuable commodity than gold and gemstones, for there is nothing you desire that could compare to her. Wisdom extends to you long life in one hand and wealth and promotion in the other. Out of her mouth flows righteousness and her words release both law and mercy. The ways of wisdom are sweet, always drawing you into the place of wholeness. Seeking for her brings the discovery of untold blessings, for she is the healing tree of life to those who taste her fruits. Doesn't that sound like favor to you? Everything that we've been talking about, the obedience, the truth, the, the mercy, everything. See how it was just all summed up right here again just rewritten in a different way but this the principles are the same i am here today to tell you that no matter what you are worried about no matter what you're going through all you have to do is follow these simple instructions and ask god to cause favor now while you're following the protocols of course to show up where you need it to be and we're talking about today to show up for you today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but today. I need you to have that faith of a mustard seed and go to God with expectation and say, okay, Father, this is what I need. I need it today. And then you do your part as in obeying the rules and regulations concerning God, concerning mercy, concerning truth, concerning obedience and forgiveness, and you shall receive favor. So, you know, I'm a mathematician. I love mathematics. And God always shows me scriptures in, t in the form of uh, mathematical formulas. So with this favor, he gave me a formula. And it is obedience plus mercy plus truth plus forgiveness equals favor. I'll say it one more time. Obedience plus mercy plus truth plus forgiveness equals favor so if you ever want favor in your life just remember that easy to remember formula apply and you will receive favor this favor is something that you have to find so from this moment onward remember we said finding favor is something you have to uncover so from this moment on i want you to kind of like look at it this way that you are on a hunt as it were you are on a, like a scavenger hunt, looking for treasure, and that treasure is favor. So from here on out, you just have to believe that that favor 
that treasure is going to be where it needs to be. So even if you're like maybe at a doctor's office and you're waiting on a medical report or at your workplace waiting on a promotion or a company you went to to apply for a job or even in a relationship or maybe just you trying to, you have to break some bad news to somebody and you know that the minute you tell them all oh, hell is going to break loose. So you're asking God to give you the favor so that when you speak that the person will receive the information calmly without drama i mean whatever the situation you find yourself in where you need favor you need to exercise these laws and you will surely obtain this favor find this favor uncover this favor in the situation remember some oh proverbs fifteen twenty three from the isv the international standard bible says an appropriate answer brings joy to a person and a well-timed word is a good thing. This teaching on favor is an appropriate answer. And I'm hoping it brought you joy. Because now you have the protocols on how to bring about favor in your life. This word, word was well-timed by God. Because everything done in God's timing is done at the best time. So you might be like, wow, I wish I had this information two weeks ago. No, don't worry about that. You got the information at the right time when you need it the most. Trust me on that. Just exercise these laws and watch God come through for you. And that's all I have for you. I Lord tell me to stop right there. So I would just say amen. Right on that. Exercise the laws and watch God come through for you i just want to thank everybody as always for supporting me on this youtube channel getting feel uh you could be doing a whole bunch of other things especially today uh uh being uh labor day in america where you could be doing so many other things but you decide to watch this video and i definitely appreciate it we don't uh, take it for granted uh thank you for fellowshipping with us uh, as always, if you haven't subscribed, you ask that you do subscribe, you like, you share this video uh, with friends and families, co-workers, share it on your social media page. Let's get the truth out there. We're so busy being bombarded with a bunch of foolishness out there, people fighting, people talking silly, people doing all these mimes that are ridiculous, but the truth of God's word, the gospel is sorely lacking and is what is really needed by society so let's get this truth out there let's get this word of god out there that people may be saved that people's lives may be changed that people's strongholds may be broken that people may now have an opportunity once again once they hear the truth to mend their relationship with god or to go deeper into god also, don't click on the notification bell so you don't miss any other new uh, video or teaching that uh, comes out. And on that note, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for allowing us to come to the conclusion of this teaching, finding favor, operating the law of expectation. expectation. I just ask that, Father, that this now becomes a reality in all those who hear this word, Father, that they now are able to operate your laws, your principles, your protocols to make favor part of their lives and that their lives will be impacted positively by it and even the lives of those who are connected to them, who are around them, that they also may be able to benefit from the truth of your word, Father. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to hear your truth. We thank you for our avenue where we can share your truth and fellowship with one another. And we just thank you, Father, for being who you are, a graceful God, a God full of mercy and compassion. We thank you for that. And in Jesus' mighty name, we just want to say amen. Amen, amen. So before we uh, go, once again, I just want to thank you for your support. And don't, uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, share the video with friends or family. And uh, enjoy the rest of your Labor Day and God bless.